Oh yeah, coffee time. All right, guys, welcome back. Survival living here. So, as the title suggested, rural preppers will die. City preppers will die. Basically, all preppers gonna die. Now, if you're still here, I'll explain why. And the thought process that I'm seeing this video is not to attack anybody's preparedness level. It's actually to encourage you to look at what you're doing and look at the possibilities of, am I doing enough? So one of the first ones I want to cover is the rural prepper. Guys, I'm all for living rural as much as possible. Get away from the cities. I see a lot of threats, and we will be covering the threats in the city, but I want to cover the threats in rural. Now, on my channel, I see a lot of comments, and I read every single one of them. Some of them are great comments, great interaction, good points. Others leave me scratching my head. One of the ones that leave me scratching my head is, well, I'm, I'm rural. I, I'm prepared for SHTF. Uh, because you're rural? Because you live in the sticks, you're prepared for SHTF. How? A lot of people have the misconception that because you live out in the sticks, when SHTF happens in the city, it's not going to touch you. Now, granted, Shea fan comes in many different forms. We've discussed that throughout this channel. We've done so many different videos on different types of scenarios. An isolated event in a city, as far as you know, a dirty bomb or an attack in a city. Yes, the rural people is going to be fine because they're not in the blast radius or whatever it is that's going on in the city. Or civil riots and stuff going on, you know, be with the city. Sure, you have like muggings, you have carjackings, you got all that stuff going on right there at a freaking stoplight. You're not going to be getting that in the rural area because the population density is different. More congested, more crime in the city compared to less people in the rural area but what most people don't look at is there's actually a lot of crime in rural areas now no i'm not talking about domestic violence because people are getting drunk and battering each other no i'm talking about people look for opportunity they look and see that these homes are away from the city there's not many prying eyes out there so criminals go that way and look in case joints and wait till people leave they know that they've got to go in town to work or go on vacation they can break in this place and nobody's gonna know anything until the owners come back so the crime is everywhere more to the city than the rule but when I say preppers are gonna die in SHTF that are rural it's because I see the mentality of people that believe because they live out in the sticks they are impervious to any type of bad SHTF or if it does come to their door because they're rural and they live country they're prepared for everything the problem is most people sit there and say they live country or they're country folk or they're rural folk and they have no hands-on skills whatsoever. Just because you live in the woods, you know, in other words, your home's in the woods, doesn't mean you're going to survive in the woods. You have to be the one to break it to you. Unfortunately, that is the majority of the comments I read from people and the interaction I have people on a daily basis. Because they live in the sticks or they got a bow back in their backyard. They're prepared for everything. But they don't know how to fish. But it's back there. You know. They've got a hand-drawn well. Down here in Florida, not many people do. Alright. Most of it is a well on property if they're away from the cities. But it's electric. And it's a small pipe going down into the ground that you just cannot get water coming out. You're not going to run a bucket down in there. But thank God you're rural, you're country folk. I've survived SHTF, CFP. Really? Do you know how to trap? Do you know how to snare? Do you know how to fish? Do you know how to hunt? Do you know how to make fire from nothing? Yeah. And just for a heads up, guys, I'm not attacking anybody that was thinking that way. I want to encourage you to open up that brain of yours. All right? Another big one I see is. Since I live so far out from the city, those city folk come up here, I ain't got nothing for them for buckshot. Do you really believe that they're just going to wander the roads like the walking dead, all in a line, um, stand outside your house, knock on your door, give us your stuff? No, just because they live in the city doesn't mean they're idiots. 
Okay. As a matter of fact, they're more in tune to laying awake tactics or misdirection tactics to get you to answer your door where they come in through your back door. Why? Because they utilize these skills, especially the criminals, not all city dwellers, so please bear with me. They utilize these skills to self-distract you, look that way while I hit you from this side all the time. So, thank God you're a roll and you're ready to hit him with a shotgun. The fact is, though, don't you think they have firearms, too? You think they're just going to walk up to the door, hold the gun, give me your stuff? No, they're going to they're gonna trap you out. The only, only idiot's going to knock on your door is to give me your stuff. Anybody doing that, it's a decoy. But because the mentality is I'll lay rule, they'll be exhausted by the time they get out here. You know how far a human can actually walk in a day? I mean, hell, look at all the migrants crossing our borders. They didn't drop dead doing it, did they? So the misconception because you live out in the woods means that nobody will ever come your way to inflict any harm on you and your family because you're just too far out. Well, when the city runs out of supplies, what's going to happen? They're going to mobilize outward. There's going to be a lot of groups doing the exact same thing. So they'll be going to the outlined areas, the rural areas, because they know there's other places out there. Again, they're not idiots. They're human beings. Some of them are actually more intelligent than you right now. More intelligent than me. Some of them hold doc doctorate degrees. They're engineers, uh, space rockets, scientists, whatever. You know, smart people. So to think that they don't know that there's other supplies in other areas, you know, this former military, there's just hell, it's assassins in the cities. You don't think that there's paid assassins, people that probably better than you and me. They will come to the city. They will come to the rural areas. They will. So what you need to do is work on building groups, get your family prepared, and yes, I do say bug out. Have a bug out plan. The whole thing about. When they come, I'll never bug out. I'll die on my porch or front steps. That's an option. There you go. That's an option. I don't consider that an option, though. You need to have plans and preparedness. In other words, be prepared for the city to come to you during SHTF. Don't sit back and go, well, I'm rural. I'm country. I can kick on everybody's ass. I can take on the world. Really? Because when did you do this? When did you have the training to do what you're claiming? And unfortunately, see more and more on YouTube where people like to type away about how great they are because they're country. Now, I'm country too, but I've had my ass kicked many damn times. Most people that say they never have, one, never fight, two, are just bullshit. All right, that's just the way it is. The only way you get good at something is to actually lose at something, just so people know. All right, so now, with rule, food, unless you are actively growing your own crops, having your own livestock, you know, stuff that you keep up, you create your own feed for your livestock, you know, you basically don't need the city at all as far as going to get pet supplies and things like that, medicine, feed, unless you have that set up, you're going to need food, and odds are, even though your country you go to Walmart or Target or wherever, Trader Joe's, I don't know, and you buy food, you buy supplies. Well, when SHTF happens and you don't grow your own stuff, then what? Just because your country, just because you rule, doesn't mean that you're impervious to what happens in the city. Food supply stops, you're not growing your own, you're screwed. All right? We... Stock up preps. I show stocking up preps, guys. That is to carry you through growing season during SHTF. All right. I'm a big advocate. I've even done videos on how to grow, trying to teach people that you can't just walk out there, put a seed in the ground, and go, gardens can be ready in anytime soon. It's a lot of work. A lot of things go on a factor as far as environmental, pollution, pests come in, destroy your crops, and well, you just didn't have any food put back. Everything was in just seeds. And three or four months grow time and nothing's produced because you lost it all due to a freak hail storm massive wind storm whatever yeah can of spam looks pretty good right about now security again doesn't matter if you raise country your rule whatever if you don't have the training to protect your home 
someone else is going to take it all right and i see the comments and the arguments i get people so pissed at me when i say this all they have to do is lay in wait they'll learn your routine they'll watch how many times you walk by you everybody has a repetition pattern all right we do i do myself okay they just sit and wait for days watching you walk past your window how many times you look out your window to see if anybody's in your yard you have a narrow field of vision when you do that inside your home just do me a favor put this on pause walk outside all right go about 50 yards in front of your house even better go 100 yards from your house 100 yards is an easy shot and now look back at your house and look how much you can see now think about using a rifle scope so when you're in your home looking at your little window they can see all the windows they get a full field of vision on your house you're a sitting target now do i tell you to run out to the woods no play rambo absolutely not it's going to get you killed okay unless you're some special operations you know that's what you trained for for the last freaking 15 20 years and you still actively do it um most of us are just going to get swacked running out in the woods trying to play rambo because without the actual training and being used to being shot at you're not prepared for it when people shoot at you i know people say they are you do you so let's get off the rule for a minute i know i'm probably pissed off half my viewers and now it's time to piss off the other half the city dwellers the urban the urban knights the preppers that live in apartments and you know in town or the big cities you guys are extremists you need to have a bug out plan i mean you need to be prepared to throw those bug out bags in a vehicle and get the hell out with many different ways of getting out of your city to a safe location now, I don't mean run to the woods, but sometimes it might be running to the woods to get away from a threat. Then you have your next move. Now, when the city erupts, okay, whether it be civil conflict, massive riots, whatever, they're going door to door taking your shit and killing people. What are you going to do? Well, I'm just going to stay in my apartment. What do you think is going to happen? They're going to kick down that door. Now, with an apartment, you got one way entry, one way out. You can put up one hell of a battle until they throw a frag in or set fire to the place. Okay, because there's only you're funneling them into a nice little spot, but I still wouldn't want to make my stand in an apartment complex. Uh, I just wouldn't. If you see th threats like that coming your way to your family, I, I highly recommend bugging out. Don't be a sitting target. Now there will be those that disagree with me. Uh, there will also be those that bring up a very good point. What about people with disabilities and elderly? You need to be working on a plan to move them in an emergency. All right? They're not an excuse to die. The excuse is you did not make a plan to get them out of harm's way. That's what it is. So we need to look at that correctly. If you know something major happens and you've got loved ones that are under your care and you know they cannot move by themselves or they're going to have extreme difficulty to, and you fail to make plans on getting them out of that situation, that's on you. All right? It just is. Now, with the urbanites, city dwellers, don't worry, guys, I'm moving into town very soon. Uh, power runs everything. And when the power goes out, and we have hurricanes down here all the time, rural, rural areas, yeah, we got gasoline generators, solar, stuff like that. Most of us do all right. We have a way of powering things up. And we're fine for a few days, you know. Most people have enough supplies to last them a while. But let's say you're in the city. They're going to be going door to door really quick. First thing they're going to do is start knocking off um, Walmarts, gas stations, things like that for supplies. The reason I say that is because when I lived in Orlando, we had that hurricane come through. Knocked the power out and everywhere. Radio, uh, cell phone signal was not working. And I can visually watch people out the window run across the street with turkeys and tennis shoes and stuff like that in their arms because they just knocked off the Walmart across the street. Yeah, yeah. So they look for an opportunity to commit crimes. It's so much easier for them. But in a major SSTF scenario, when these pickings become slim and there's no food coming in, they'll work their way through the civilian population. 
all right that's why i say you need to have a bug out plan and once they've already cleared out everything in the city and it won't take long especially if there's a lot of people big cities it won't take long to clear out all those shells they will branch out into outlined areas they will go into rural areas now with the city some of y'all know how to do window gardens or gardens on your roof that's awesome it is a way of supplementing food but it's not a, a long-term farm there's just no way to keep it protected and there's not enough acreage or actually it's called hectares of land to produce enough food for you and your family okay so you won't be growing your own unless you're ready to have a militia group back you up you tear up whatever park is in the area and you'll have centuries working it all the time now you got to feed them while you're growing i mean you really think it's going to work out again having groups is very important now do you need to have a group to survive that is a yay nay depends i am pro group okay but they have to be vetted very well at the same time i look at it and go i just don't trust many people okay especially here recently i don't trust many people that's your decision if you know you can work with somebody and y'all working on the same plans together and you can create groups I encourage you to do so absolutely strength in numbers if you cannot and you're just going to or you just flat out refuse to you're just going to lone wolf it uh, i don't know how long you expect to survive you have to sleep at some point in time every time you're cooking every time you're chopping wood you are making noise you have no one pulling security detail yeah if you get injured who's going to help you i mean sure a lot of things you can fix yourself but a lot of things you can't again i'll leave that open to you guys so anyway guys please feel free to leave comments in the video uh they're in the description what do you think the pros or con of rule um if you are rule and you're pissed off at me make sure you say hey i'm pissed off at ucfp if you're city same thing it doesn't matter what i say i'm looking at things and trying to help you get your brain set and looking at things differently just because you've got a stack of spam you got a stack of spam i'm gonna buy it off you now i love spam um it doesn't mean you're prepared for everything that's going to be coming our way now there might be some things you are prepared for and this is one another reason why i talk about alternative power water filtration we do all these videos guys i want you to keep pushing learning new skills not just oh yeah i remember making fire or building forts when i was a kid well now if you're like me 45 years old you got all kind of injuries through your body and they're finally catching up to you you realize that you don't even squat good in the woods anymore it's hard enough crawling around on your stomach um but you know you used to do things back when you were eight it's a big difference i really want you guys to look at it and think about it all right speak to you later